What is up you guys? So today we're going to talk about the difference between continuous time and discrete time signals. We're going to show you how mathematically we can we can look at both types of signals and finally we're going to take a look at how MATLAB looks at these types of signals. Are they continuous or are they discrete time? Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. So this lecture is going to build up on the previous one and further classify signals based upon their time characteristic. That is, we could classify signals as both continuous time, which is also referred to as analog, so continuous time signals or analog signals are used interchangeably. And what continuous time or analog signals are is that they're signals that are defined for every value of time and they take on values in the continuous interval, let's say A, B. And A could take the value minus infinity and B could be plus infinity. This is the extreme case, right? In terms of mathematics, these signals are described by functions of a continuous variable, so which is in, in this case t. So as you can see over here in this figure, we've got a continuous signal that is zero for negative time and is a certain signal that decays with time, right? And in particular, this signal is the decaying exponential, right? It starts off at one and it dies or decays with time. Actually, to be more specific, it's a multiplication with another signal, right? Because the E minus T starts out at plus infinity in negative time. So we're cutting this negative part out and we're saying that it's zero. Well, this is done using the u of t function, the step function, that is one for positive time and zero for negative time. Now on the other hand, discrete time signals are defined only at certain specific values of time. These time instances are not necessarily equidistant in time. So you can define a time instance that is at one second, another one that samples at three seconds and then at 10 seconds and so on. Okay. But in practice, that's not the case. Usually in practice, they are taken at equally spaced intervals for computational convenience. You don't want an oscillator that samples at random instances of time, right? You'd want this oscillator to be sampling at regular instances of time. Um, so the way this is achieved is simply by picking up regular samples of this signal. So if I have the same exact signal over here and I'm interested in sampling this signal right at regular intervals of time. So say I'm interested in not X of T, but X of T sub N, that is discrete values of time. Um, of course, where n is an integer, right? So if this is time instance one, and this is minus one, and this is minus two, you've got a two here, and so on, then all you're doing is picking up samples of the signal. So this is my sample x one, this is my sample x zero, this guy is my x2 and so on, right? Here's my x of minus one, which is zero. This is my x minus two. And so we don't really care about the continuous part. We just care about the discrete one. So we're just picking samples Tn of x of t, right? So you should have noticed that a discrete time signal can be represented mathematically by a sequence of real or maybe complex numbers. 
Now to emphasize the discrete time nature of a signal, we shall denote, instead of xtn, we shall denote the signal as xn instead of xtn, where xn is the sample that corresponds to x at time instance t sub n. So if I were to say, for example, x, you might see me use brackets from time to time and you might see me use parentheses from time to time, x of n as such. This, by definition, is the signal x sampled at time instance t n, right? But since we're going to restrict ourselves with equidistant sampling, so Tn is actually n times a period t. So this is referred to as the sampling period. So this is x sampled at time n times t, right? So here's an example where we sampled our continuous signal x of t at regular instances of period, which in this case is t equal to 1. Okay, now by selecting those values or by selecting values from an analog signal, this process has a name and it's called sampling. So you're actually sampling, picking samples from your continuous signal. Okay, we will talk about sampling in more details in the coming lectures. Now, for the moment, you should keep in mind that sampling is just the process of picking samples from a continuous or an analog signal. And all the measurements done are done at regular intervals of time. I'm going to show you a small example on MATLAB where actually on MATLAB, there's no such thing as continuous signals. All, all you're doing is just plotting a vector. It gives the impression that the signal is <laughs> continuous, but it's not. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say I've got time instances going from minus pi. Let's just do this line space from minus pi till pi. Let's pick a hundred equidistant points and let's generate a signal cosine of t. Finally, let's plot x versus t. And this is what you get, okay? If you want the cosine x to go faster, that is at a higher frequency, all you have to do is just two pi, let's say 10 of t. Go ahead and plot it, and there you go. Doesn't look that good, because my sampling period is not low enough. So let me pick another frequency, plot it. Looks better. Let's pick more points and plot, okay, generate again, then plot, and there you go, looks much better. Now let's make it slower, that is at a smaller frequency, looks better, looks like a cosine to me. <laughs> okay, so this looks like a continuous signal, as you can see, because MATLAB plots it using a continuous line, but trust me, it's not. And the proof of that is that this is your x vector. So they're chosen at discrete times. A better plot over here seems to be the stem plot. So the stem actually does this plot over here. It shows you the samples at regular intervals of time. If we zoom in, we'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So we're picking actually samples from the continuous signal X of T, okay? Zoom in over here as well. There you have it. Different stems or samples. Okay, so that's about it for this lecture. We talked about continuous time or analog signals versus discrete time signals. We also showed you how those two signals differ in terms of mathematics. And in the coming one, we're going to talk about continuous valued versus discrete valued signals. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this lecture beneficial. If you did, please leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions whatsoever, 
kindly leave a comment down in the comment section below and I'll make sure I'll get to it as soon as possible. Also consider donating to my Patreon account where I'll leave the link to my Patreon down in the description section below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in future lectures.